Hello and welcome back to Lush Arts. We will be continuing where we left off on Tate's route. So, in the previous video, Tate kind of sort of dragged you back to the, the village of the Wild Furs, and we were introduced to everyone properly, to Ragnar, the son of the chief, and I guess sort of stepbrother to Kusani, aka Tate, aka the cat. Um... And we were introduced to Ragnar's, quote unquote, not really, but kind of sort of mate, Eureka. Uh, they are kind of like the jack of all trades of the village. They are, their their job is basically everything. They're very good at a lot of things, except for one obvious thing. I can't mention it because it's the, the beginning of the video and you're not supposed to mention that type of things at the beginning of the videos. But yeah, so um, we were also introduced to Ruth, like a big bear uh, wild fur, who's, you know, the one that wears the mask, who is apparently infatuated with Cody. And we were also, we were also introduced to the chief, who was kind of trying to get something into Tate's head that Cody might want to actually stay but he might want to stay to be with Ragnar and Eureka. So suspicious. And Tate himself, I'm sorry, Kusani, was sort of like, like, hmm, that's, that's a little weird. Hmm. Hmm. Does he actually want to stay? What's going on here? He seems to be having some doubts or some worries, but you know, this is Kusani we're talking about. Hmm. Anyways, so we will be continuing the meal, the little festive meal that they're doing, so yeah. Everyone was ravenous, either from hard work or dancing, or because they forgot to eat all day. But even after we all filled our bellies, the table still remained rich. Yep, this is what I call the feast. Some wildfires got up and started telling stories and recalling battles past. Others decided to nap under the huge shaded trees is in order. Some became very touchy and decided to get into a hut together, either in pairs or in groups. Gotta get rid of that lust after a good meal, am I right? As for me, I have questions. So many questions. The first and most important being... Where the fuck are you, Scribbles? Ah! What? What? Is the world ending? No, but my patience is. Where were you all this time? Why? Missed me? A little, yeah. Oh. W well, I was just watching some of these movies in your mind. A little hard to find something other than porn around here, but I managed. I especially like The Firm. It's this comedy about a group of people working at a firm, selling paper and... I know the one. It's in my mind, after all. So, what else do you want? How come you didn't show up for so long? My mind feels like it will explode with lust. Everybody here is so sex-driven. You can't imagine all the sex jokes and inappropriate touching that we did today. So, nothing new. You would usually jump at the first opportunity to call me a slut or be sarcastic. We just found out that my friend was adopted as a baby by these nine fallen, and his real name is Kusani. Isn't that interesting? Ew, family drama. I thought your whole point of taking over my body was to experience new and interesting things. Hey, Cody, what am I? Huh? What species? Er, demon? Right. So do you honestly believe that in my centuries of living as a literal Nightfallen, I've never experienced a welfare celebration before? That I've never set foot in a camp like this? I've been in more orgies with freaks like these than I can remember. And people claiming that they were raised or even birthed by Nightfallen are not new either. To me, this is as exciting as it is for you to watch paint dry. Now that you explained it, I can give you a pass. Although you could have done so with less attitude. Excuse me, your majesty. For the record, I do take a peek sometimes, so I know a lot of things that happen in the real world. I have to say that these are some very tame wild furs. Explain. I mean, 
They're usually friendly, but not this friendly to strangers. We're not strangers. We rescued their god or whatever. Plus, one of us is their chief's adoptive son. Yeah, and I bet they really want his son to stay. What are you saying? I'm saying that you're going to lose your boyfriend to these Nightfallen. What? No, he would never just leave the academy. Why not? He said it before. Nobody gives a real shit about him there. He seems like he'd fit nicely. But in the end, it's his choice, right? You wouldn't want to take that away from him. Right. In the end, I don't care what you do. Take my advice or don't. I'll go back to my show. Call for me if you need me, but do it quietly, please. Scribbles is an old demon, old enough to know a thing or two. But as he said, it's his choice to stay or not. It's not like I can force him to keep away, especially since his wyvern friend will stay here for sure. These Nightfallen aren't that bad, right? I mean, just because I don't like what they're trying to do, doesn't mean it's wrong. Ugh, Scribbles just popped in, made me question my new and old friends, and dipped without another word. The definition of an evil demon. It's time to find out more about these mysterious, intricate, hot Nightfallen. It'll be a good distraction for Ragnar and Eureka as well, since judging by these bedroom eyes, they look like they're going to jump at each other and fuck right here on my lap. Do you guys want to play a little game? Absolutely. Hopefully not one that involves running around after a meal. Nah, just a question game. I realize that I have many questions unanswered still, about you two as individuals, but of this place as a whole. And you can ask things about me and my kind in return. Lovely, I did actually have some things that I wanted to ask you, but didn't know how. I'd love to help you learn more about us. Hit it. Okay, I'll go first. What do I want to know about? The masks and the naming culture. So I noticed that only some of you wear masks. Ah, the masks. Ragnar, do you remember your first mask? Clear as day, all those feathers kept making me flick my ears. I don't know how I live like that. Mine was a simple dough, I got lucky. So why? Ah, right. Uh, here's how we do it. The chief chooses an animal, object, or shape that represents us when we start training in whatever field that we'll be working in. Hunting, carpentry, sewing, that kind of stuff. The mask is placed on with magic that only the chief possesses, so that you can't remove it. So Ruth has regular eyes under the dark mask? Yes, Ruth is at level 2. Level 2? You only need to wear a mask over your eyes at level 2. That is, for those who are close to getting their names. What about the chief? Why is he wearing a mask? Uh, does he ha not have a name? He does, but it is forbidden to use or known by just anyone. As for the mask, just tradition that the chief wears one for the rest of his life. Don't ask how he sees through that thing, it's a mystery. Oh, well there goes my next question. Speaking of names, how do you get those? I think that you mentioned that you sometimes name each other. Names are not given, they are one. I named Eureka, he gave me his heart and I gave him a name. Mine for example was chosen by my father, meaning warrior in our tongue. And he named me when we became partners, as mentioned. Because when I met you, I knew that I found a priceless treasure. Ah, you... That is so sweet. Did you also get the idea from our tongue? Yes, while traveling your lands, I came across this word. I love the sound of it, and when I found out what it meant, I knew that I had to save it for my special someone. I'd be melting with cuteness if they weren't squeezing me to death trying to nuzzle each other. What about Ruth? What does that mean? It's from your tongue again. His full name is Ruthless, but we call him Ruth until he takes his mask off. What did he do to win a name like that? It's a bit ironic. He solves all conflicts with kindness in the camp. Ruthless would never hurt a fly, so the chief wanted to have some fun. It is pretty funny, I admit. Is that the only reason? Well, another reason would be that he has to do whatever task the chief tells him to do 
with no questions. That's why he must remain ruthless. But my father never had him gut a fish before, so his innocence is in good hands. It just turns slightly scary. Our turn. Shoot your shot. How is the sex culture at the Academy Town? This town specifically? Yes, we heard that you're way more open about that than regular folk. Still, we made sure not to make you uncomfortable with our public displays, just in case. I'd say that we're kind of like you in a way. Except that we're not allowed to be naked in public or have sex in public. So your ways are more personal. That's why you're so shy. Yeah, more personal. Interesting. What do you want to know about? Let's know more about the sexy leopard. Questions for Ragnar. Starting off simple, what's with the tattoo? Are these on my chest? Yeah. It's the two moons in the sky. Moonlight is a source of magic for all demons. Nighttime is when we're most powerful, and it's theorized that the same is for dragons as well. I just wanted to pay my respects by having the symbol imprinted upon me. And fur tattoos are hot. He's the second reason that I decided to get it. One of your kind made it, actually. About that, tell me more about those adventures of yours. Where to begin? As you might know, in our tribe, names have to be won. Usually somebody would win a name by doing something grand or unique. In my case, I decided to be adventurous. Which was very extra and very rude of you. Why's that? Well... Because he was gone for 124 moons. 12 years. Wow. In my defense, I brought home spices for these delicious meals, made connections with your kind, and also accumulated a lot of knowledge. A whole new tongue for the whole tribe. It's the only reason that we can communicate with Cody right now. A whole language in eight years? That's pretty good. You two and the chief are very fluent, even when it comes to slang. Eureka is a smart one. I learned it in only two, alongside math. Which is knowledge that I brought with me as well. You're welcomed. In truth, I really am grateful by how much Ragnar helped the tribe, even if he left me alone for so long. Ironically, your whole adventure accumulated to a single point. Isn't that how you got your name? It is, and I am proud of it. I slayed a huge wyvern with my bare hands. You can see its front teeth in the main camp. On top of the watchtower. I think I did. I was wondering what animal or nightfallen was so big to have those bones. You truly are a warrior. You're gonna make me blush. What about your scars, Ragnar? How did you get them? Ah, the symbols of my victories. I'm ashamed that I don't have more. A good warrior doesn't need many scars. That's true, I never got injured fighting beasts or savage furs. So, how? These were made not that long ago, actually. A rogue wild fur from our tribe went behind the chief's back, so I had to fight him to the death. Fortunately for him, he escaped, but not before we gave each other some nasty scars. Too bad, he was a good tribe's mate up until that point. That sounds a bit too gruesome for a table discussion, so I'll drop the subject. If you're done with your story, may I address the next question? Be my guest. What is your relationship with Kusani? You're not partners, are you? I think that they use the word boyfriend over there. Uh, we use both. I, I mean, not that we are either. <laughs> You're just friends. Yep, <laughs> just friends. You did mention that in the chief's hut, I forgot. We're both totally virgins too. Why did I say that? Oh my. Eureka covers his mouth in shock. That is new information. You weren't kidding when you said that you're shy. See? Just how many moons without sex is that? Too many, dear. Too many. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, what about Eureka? Eureka, how come you're so dressed? Everyone else has some clothing covering their junk at most. 
looking at you, Ragnar. I'll let you know that you're kind of the way that I dressed. Yeah, because you're hot. Like, smoking hot. It's like one of the hottest characters in this whole visual novel. Come on. I wear more layers so that everybody knows that I am not easy access. What does that mean? Never mind, I know actually sex things. Exactly. I'm too busy all the time just to have a go whenever, so I dress more properly. Especially because all the jobs that I do, I need something to protect my fur. Speaking of, why so many jobs in the first place? I, um, I just feel embarrassed. As we mentioned before, I'm not good with repeated breeding. I'm not a good warrior or a hunter, but I love my tribe and I want to help. So I want to be as useful as possible with the jobs that I am best at. Which is a lot of them. With your brains, who needs muscles? Although you're still way stronger than me. Heh, <laughs> thank you. You're very kind. May I give you the next question? Let's hear it. Considering that you don't live in a tribe, what work will you do in the future? What is or will be your job within your society? That is a pretty deep question about my future. The answer is obvious. Nightfallen Hunter. But do I want to tell the literal Nightfall in that? Uh... Quickly, what's the closest thing to a Nightfallen Hunter? A hooker. Really, Brain? Ah, a noble profession. You will bring a lot of use to your kind. Way more than me, that's for sure. I don't know about that. We should go to the next one. Okay, Lizard. I noticed uh, a lizard in your camp. An eyesore, isn't it? We're sorry that you had to see him. He's... No, 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 not at all. I'm fine with him. I was just wondering, why is a savage fur here? Why, he's doing the tedious jobs that we don't have time to do. What else? No, I mean, why do you own a slave? You've been in our society, Ragnar. Don't you think that's wrong? Huh. I've never had someone in your kind react poorly to this information before. They would either slap my palm in agreement or not care. I also thought that your kind doesn't like, uh, what do you call the violent ones? Savage furs. Well, um, we do hate them, but I'll drop the question for now. I haven't seen any children around. How do wild furs even reproduce? Our biology teacher did not care to teach us anything useful. The same as you. We need a male and a female. Then the female will carry the baby for 17 moons until... 17? Sorry, that was a little loud. How long do your females carry it? Nine moons. Wow, no wonder there are so many more of them. As for the ones that are born, but not mature yet, we have a separate part of camp. The young have the highest level of protection, and they are not allowed in these parts of the camp, since you know. Reading sessions. Makes sense. Our turn. A simple one. What is your age? I'm 19 years old. Years? That is 12 moons for one year, remember? You taught me this. So, 19 would be... 12 times 19? 12... 19... That is impossible to calculate. No, no. Here is an easier method. How many moons is 10 times 19? Um, wait, don't tell me. You add nothing at the end. Zero. So somehow it's supposed to make it... 190? Correct. Now, do 2 times 19. It's... 20. 2 times 10. 2 times 9. Uh, 38? Correct again. Now add them. Add what? Uh, it's 158 moons, Ragnar. This math thing is too hard. In other words, Cody is not a cup, as we thought. Not even close. Yay? Even someone as sharp as Ragnar can be defeated with math. I 
think that's about it. I feel like we bonded further with these questions. And I know enough to say that I find your kind even more interesting and captivating than before. You are certainly more interesting than most people that I met on my travels. That is a bigger compliment for me than you think. We continue to lazily feast while sharing stories. Some nightfalling got dressed with big robes, covering their heads, then jumped over the table with powerful leaps to get to the empty space in the middle. Apparently, the entertainment has begun. Three of them dance to the music, fluttering their robes around, while everyone else claps in rhythm with the music. I feel like a king whose gestures have been unleashed. The chief and Kusani seem to be most entertained, thus the gesture pays special attention to them. I wish that I were the one to put a smile that big on the cat's face. It's now been a couple of hours since we got here. The arena battles already feel like an eternity ago. The remaining Nightfallen are either going straight back to their daily duties or finding empty huts to drain their lust in. The chief and his guards left the cat with a final goodbye, returning to his chamber. Eureka, Ragnar, and Ruth went urgently to investigate a trap that went off somewhere around the camp and will be back shortly. Only one fur remains playing an out-of-tune string instrument slowly, emotionally. The silence and lazy energy is cut suddenly by the eccentric cat that I grew to like so much. Hey! So, how was your feast? Eureka knocked it out of the park. I didn't think that wild game could taste so good. Too bad fish kept us apart. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Another reason that they're my sworn enemy. I feel like I'm dreaming. Me too. Is your dream a good one? It's not a nightmare, that much I know. But this whole family thing and the prophecies and celebrations and feasts, it's so... Unreal? Kind of. Speaking of, since we're alone for the first time that we got here, what do you think of everything? I like it here. You do? Don't you? I think so, but you're the nature enthusiast with a wild step family around here, so it's a more important question to you. To be honest, I feel amazing. I feel free and like I finally found my purpose. Isn't your purpose and dream to be a hunter? That is different. I thought that you were getting along well with Eureka and Ragnar. Like, really well. Do you have second thoughts about them now? It's not like I dislike them. Just... I think we should leave. We have to go home. What? Now? Yes, now. Okay, Killjoy. Does a full stomach turn you ungrateful? I agree that the Chief can be a bit weird and everyone is a bit overly joyful, but you can't not like them. They use slave labor. Is that what this is about? I knew that you were keeping too quiet around it. You do realize that Lizard is a savage nightfallen, right? In the wild, he wouldn't think twice before chomping your head off. Then how come he's doing everything he's told? A regular nightfallen doesn't understand when you tell it to go fetch some water. An alligator can be taught to do tricks. Doesn't mean that you have to leave one to babysit your child. Damn it, Cody. Are we seriously having this discussion? Are you seriously defending slavery? It's an animal, a nightfallen. Do you even realize that these people who praised us, fed us, took care of us the whole day were still being hunted down by hunters when you were alive, living a pampered life in the city? You were already a toddler when the Government Protection Service for Wild first started, and that's only talking about our country. These people suffered so much in the past because of us. And you're trying to defend an even more primitive nightfallen species? But of course, you're defending whatever walks on two legs and has a dick. That's not... And another thing. If they're treating that other nightfallen so horribly, then say it. Let me hear you say it. What do we do with Savage Nightfallen that we find in the wild, huh? I'm not hearing anything. We kill them for energy. I rest my case. They are clearly better than us in that regard. What's next? Mimics have rights to bear arms? 
Maybe that plant that attacked us just wanted a friend? I don't know much about the Nightfallen world. I was just a nerd that got lucky getting into this academy, but I know from today's experience at least some of all that Nightfallen philosophy must be wrong. This guy deserves better. Die? Trust me, there are people in our society who have it worse than that lizard. I should know. But... Never mind. Look. You do you. I do have the viewpoint that the world is not just black and white, so whatever you think about that situation, it's your opinion. Just don't get in trouble with my family, alright? I'm not gonna stir anything, if that's what you're implying. I'm not a revolutionist. Good. In any case, was that the only reason that you wanted me to go home? I just thought that we might have overstayed our welcome. Don't you miss your other friends? Dallin? Aiden? Marina? I am with family, Cody. I get it. Then I'll stay and... No. I, I mean, you don't have to. I I'll only stay for a little longer. If you want to go home, that's fine. I'll teleport you later. I just need enough magic to teleport us there. Let myself back. But you'll be here alone. Not alone, just without you. That simple statement, for some reason, hurt more than I thought it would. I'm happy, Cody. I just want to look past the bad, ignore the dark, and just smile until I can smile no more. That's kind of my life motto. I understand. My convincing was not the best. My points were too personal for him to care about. Is there anything in the world that matters more to me right now than making this cat happy? No. So I will bend to his wishes. Kivathi is going to wake up again soon, so I want to be there to feed him. I see. Well, I'll meet you later in the main camp then. Yes, uh, main camp. Don't venture too far. I'll be with you once I have enough magic to spend. See ya. I walk to said main camp just in time for the trio to arrive through the main gate, empty-handed but not injured, at least. Hey, what's with the trap situation? False alarm. It was one of the big nightfallen traps we set, so we got a little excited. Even I wanted to be a part of that. Kusani, where? He's waiting for Kivathi to wake up so he can feed him some leftovers. So he's too busy to spend time with you? Yeah, kind of? Why? Come us, come us! What? He wants you to come with us if you're free. We're going into the forest again to gather some plants as well as wood for their new pyre and carpentry while we're at it. After such a feast, some of the tribesmates might be sick but I'm kind of out of the needed herbs to treat them. My supply is a little low, as embarrassing as it might be to admit, so I'll be looking for that. Ruth will carry the wood and Ragnar is our pretty face. I will be your bodyguard, thank you very much. That's what he likes to tell himself to feel useful. Urgh. It'll be way more fun with you there. That is, if you don't have any other plans? In my mind, the response is almost instant, but I can't afford to leave my friend alone here. My mind flies to the cat, sitting patiently and waiting for his wyvern friend to wake up alone. But he's not the only one on my mind. On the other end of the camp, the lizard slave is carrying a bucket of grains when someone's leg just so happens to get in his way completely by accident, for sure, making him fall and spill the bucket. A scene is about to happen, maybe I should get away before that happens? With all that in mind, do I want to go with them? Yes, but I'm going to stay in the camp. I'm trying to avoid something very, very obvious happening. For YouTube's sake. There were too many things in this camp my mind is focused on for me to go wandering about. I don't want to leave my friend far out of my sight. Sorry, I'd love to spend time with you, but if you don't mind, I have some things that I want to do around camp. Oh, that's fine. We'd love to spend some more time with you before we have to say goodbye to, but I get it. He looks towards the narrow path where Kusani resides right now, and smiles back softly. 
Cody not come? Sorry, big guy. Maybe another time. I suppose after a whole afternoon spent here and with your new attire, nobody should give you trouble. If anyone does, tell me and I'll take care of them. Most of your tribe mates are locked in huts anyway. Heh, <laughs> of course. The common afterloon lust. We should do that too, when we get back, Eureka. Been waiting for that all day. Ruth won't join. The more the merrier. That's what I was avoiding. They leave the camp hand in hand, talking and laughing like best friends. Technically, I could have still avoided it while being with them, but... Eh. I almost feel bad I refused their invitation. I don't. Who knows, maybe it would have blossomed into something more than a forest trip. It would have. No more overthinking. Live in the present, not the past. And the present tells me to move my attention to the spilled bucket. The wild fur responsible is now screaming and kicking at the lizard, gesturing at the mess created. Stupid lizard. Look where go. Go down and every pick up grain. Or you want more no food day? Ach. Chole. Although the violence is leaving a bad taste in my mouth, I can't help but worry for the wild fur. His kicks are like a toddler's kicks against the tough, scaly skin of the lizard's sides, barely even flinching. I think he hurt his foot, trying to hide his limp as he walks away. Not to mention that the lizard could simply bite his head off and be done with it, but instead he kneels down and starts gathering each grain by hand until the wild fur gets bored and walks away with the last spat and scornful look. That is going to take forever. The fact that most of the camp is covered by grassy patches with small rocks scattered around won't make it any easier. I don't want to make assumptions, but I haven't seen the lizard eat anything while I was here. His job at the feast was making sure that the torches were kept lit and no fire started by accident, as well as pouring drinks whenever the actual servants were busy with something else like massaging the chief's shoulders and feet. I have to keep in mind that intervening would also be a bad idea, especially without Ragnar, Eureka, or Ruth around. I make my way back to the feast part of the camp. The excitement about these new guests has died down. Nobody gives me more than a glance. At least I won't attract attention to what I'm about to do. Oh, would you look at that? I was wrong again. Everything is so peaceful in the other parts, because my friend decided to show off his powers in this clearing, stirring a crowd. The cat is flying nightfall and very high in the air before letting them drop slowly with this floaty magic, however that works. He does it again and again and again while being cheered on, wails of excitement even scaring the wyvern. He notices me and teleports in my face next. Hey, whatcha doing? Wanna go in the Kusani ride? No thanks, I know what that's like. Your loss? Are you sure that it's wise to fly multiple people like that? Combine it with teleporting and other things? You know, we just had a battle earlier, right? You should be conserving your energy. Psst, it's fine, mom. I'm full of magic and energy after that meal. And I can't let everyone down. Look how happy they look while falling. I just want you to be safe. I will make sure to leave a little bit so that we can go home. And if I somehow go overboard? We can just stay here one more day. No big deal, right? Just you and me sharing a tent. Nobody else around. We have a test tomorrow. Did you already forget? Oh, that. Well... Don't make that face. I promise that I'll have enough magic to get us back, okay? Promise. In fact, we'll go right after I'm done here. Give me like 20 minutes. Uh, Alright, I'm just glad that you're fitting in with your family. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me. He teleports back to the cheering crowd, picking another Nightfallen to give a ride to. He values honesty above all else, so I shouldn't be worried that he'll break his promise. I have other things to worry about after all. There are a lot of leftovers. I would be surprised if they won't throw at least some of it away. Hopefully that means nobody will realize some of it is missing. 
I choose a wide piece of flatbread that I stuff with as much meat as it can hold. Fish, boar, duck, whatever the blue colored one is. You name it. I bring my food package back to the main camp where the lizard's progress in picking up the grain is barely noticeable. As I approach, despite the smile that I'm trying to keep, he starts collecting the grain faster. Uh, hey. Hey, wait. He stops, but doesn't raise his head to look at me. I squat down in response. Seeing his head dip even lower, I get on my knees to be as small as possible. Here. You must be hungry. He only now dares to raise his gaze, his eyes wide, fixated on my offering, but not making a move. I gently, slowly place my hand on his and raise it. His chained rough hand almost twice my size. Dangerously sharp claws in sight, paired with hands strong enough to crush skulls, information that makes me nervous, but I can't back down now. I place the food in the reluctant palm and he starts eating, there and then. Thankfully, the thin piece of cloth around his muzzle does not do much to slow him down. Now, what's this all about then? I start gathering the grain in his steed while he's busy. Something I quickly realize is completely ridiculous. It really feels like there's no end. Each piece I grab seems to spawn another, not to mention the dirt that you have to clean. The lizard finishes the food with that last satisfying bite and rushes to help. His large fingers, although furless, are even less useful in the situation. They spent more time brushing against mine than picking grain. Cool, you're having a moment with a literal animal. Somebody call the police. He's not an animal, you ignorant excuse of a demon. Wow, that felt a bit personal. Call me when he strangles you to death so I can laugh. Better yet, I'll call you right now to help us with this stupid grain that dumbass Wildfur made him spill. And if you hit me with a why should I question one more time, I'm holding my breath until I pass out. You're becoming more and more unlikable. My request, or more like a threat, worked, as all the remaining grain, which was a lot more than I thought, rises up through the grass and dirt and flies into the bucket. It's so nice of you to show up again. By the way, even if it was just to insult me, what's the occasion? My favorite character in that show moved jobs. They just got him out for no reason. Ah, I remember that part. It did suck. The lizard seems surprised by the spontaneous magic. Don't worry, that was me. Here. We get up and I hand him the bucket. I wouldn't mind carrying it myself, but we're already getting weird looks from the few Nightfallen still around, just because I stand so close to him. If he walked around empty-handed while the guest was carrying the weight, that would not generate good responses. Do you have a name? He does not respond, but glances my direction. I suppose if so many wildfirs don't have a name, a savage one won't have one either, huh? Do you mind if I call you Lizard? He cringes for a second, but no response again. Perhaps not. Do you mind me giving you a name? He... nods? Oh, oh, okay, in that case. It's best to stay away from the wildfirs traditional way of naming. Something simple, something that defines him, but not in an obvious way. What about... Gale? The lizard looks startled, just for a moment before... Blushing? Blushing and nodding slowly. He likes it way more than I thought he would. My heart will never be strong enough to tell him that I took that name from a video game character, a slave knight. Not that he'd even know that what a video game is. I can feel Scribbles' muted laughter in the back of my mind. What's so funny? Did you even know what that name means in the old language? No, I just took it because it fits him. What does it mean? Beautiful and generous. You're basically flirting at this point. That just makes me like the name more. But, but wait, you're supposed to be embarrassed. I thought that you missed my teasing. You're gonna have to try harder. In the meantime, we get to a storage area that slumps underground a couple of feet. He dumps the bucket in a large barrel before coming back out. I attempt to follow to our next destination, but he turns around and blocks my way looking me in the eyes with a determined look, as if to ask, what's your deal? I just think that you deserve a break, but 
I don't have the authority to give you one, so I decided to help you. Can we go now? That is not a satisfactory answer for him. Look, my friend, you know, the little black cat is too busy with his new life. The new friends that I made are away from camp, so if you want to know why I won't leave you alone, it's because I'm bored. Can you accept love out of boredom? It's not fake kindness, it's just conditional. I don't know how much of that he understood, but it was enough for him to soften his expression and body language and allow me to accompany him further. So, where to, Chief? He cringes again. Right, the Chief is your leader. Um, where to, boss? Gale points towards the burned-up pillar. Ashes of flowers and other offerings that were around the pillar littered the ground and the immediate vicinity. Not to mention the half-burned pillar that still stands, looking black and fragile, but still heavy. He picks up another, larger bucket than the one before and starts gathering the ashes with his bare hands as they crumble to dust at the faintest touch. You... you have to gather all the ash? He nods. Everything? He nods again. What is this? Who the hell do they think that you are? Cinderella? Gale stops to look at me, curious about my little outrage. Nuh-uh. Gather the grain from the grass, then the ashes from the sand and dust. What's next? You're not allowed to the ball? He tilts his head curiously. Scribbles, do something about this. What do you want me to do? Can you teleport all this crap out? I'm not good at teleportation, but even if I was, I could only work with the big pieces. I don't know your powers, just find something useful. I could probably gather every piece of ash in the camp in one spot, then throw everything as far as I can. How far is far? A mile over the trees? Perfect, do that. Hold your lizards, you don't have the energy for that. A spell like that takes a lot of resources. You need to find a source. Would one of the crystals from the feast work? Those would be perfect, but I doubt that you want to get caught sucking off the light of one of those. Mm, well said. Do you think... Gale? Oh, mm, yeah, sure. If he has enough energy, then it might work. You're trading the energy that he would typically use to do this job, to do it instantly, so I see nothing wrong there. Just make sure not to take too much, since I doubt anyone is fucking a savage fur regularly so his energy could be on the lower side. Got it. Gale, do you mind if we hold hands for a moment? I kneel in front of him and hold my hands patiently. He looks at his own chained wrists and black palms, trying to decide. Finally, he gives in and gently pushes his fingers forward as I intertwine them for maximum contact. I focus and imagine draining him. I can feel his anxiety as the energy flows away from him, but he keeps calm. Is this enough, Scribbles? Barely. Can you perform the spells anyway? Yeah, but it'll take a bit of a toll on your body. Not as bad as it would have if you didn't do this, but still. It's okay then, just do it. I don't want to steal too much from him. Your wish. I gesture to Gale to get up and take a few steps back. Then the pillar begins to rise, removing itself from the ground, leaving a deep hole of at least four feet. How was anyone supposed to take that out? Small flakes of ash then fly towards it from all directions. From the roofs of the huts, from the branches of the trees, then even someone's loincloth. All of it sticks tightly to the pillar, even the smallest particles of ash, then it shoots in the air like a rocket disappearing above the trees. Gale's expression is completely in awe, is the last thing that I see before my eyes close. Yep, I knew it. Hopefully somebody finds you before he eats you alive. Although my eyes are closed and I lost most of the control of my body, I can feel big, trembling hands wrapping around me. After a short while, I sense the comforting warmth of hay against my back, followed by the sound of hasty footsteps fading into the distance. Someone gently presses a cool, damp cloth onto my forehead before settling down in silence for the next ten minutes or so. Finally, my fingers regain their mobility and I cautiously open my eyes greeted by the sight of the hut's ceiling. A wide-eyed lizard stares at me from a couple of feet away. I sit up slowly and smile at him. Ugh, 
Magic is a little dangerous to you sometimes, you know? Gale nods. Thank you for caring for me. I should probably... He hands me a clay cup with some greenish liquid smelling strongly of wild herbs. What is this? He insists that I take it. It's warm, but that's where any positive adjectives stop. It tastes bitter, revolting, like medicine. This is medicine, isn't it? Did you get it from Eureka's place? Please tell me that you didn't leave hints that you were in there. He gets up, showing me a small burrow filled with leaves and weeds. You have your own medicine, huh? Whatever I force myself to drink just now does have good effects. Soon, I no longer feel dizzy or fatigued, but still a bit weak. I appreciate you watching over me, but what about your duties? Won't you get in trouble? Gale shakes his head, showing his still ashy palms. They didn't think that you'd be done with the ash cleaning so fast, so nobody gave you more tasks, is that right? Another nod. Good, because I don't want you to work either. I pat the seat next to me on the makeshift hay bed, and he shyly complies, but not without complications. As he gets up, his knees give in, and he falls on top of me, quickly scrambling to get off. Wow, you're heavy. In a good way. Is everything alright? He looks away, embarrassed, with his arms between his thighs. The energy drain must have been a hit to him, too. I'm gonna need to make it up to him, but first... So, Mr. Gale, I want you to answer me this. Can you understand what I'm saying? In general? Gale thinks for a second, then confirms my suspicions. What suspicions? I thought it was obvious. But you can't talk back? Negative response. Why is that, Scribbles? Savages can learn a language, even if slower than the average wild fur, but they don't have what it takes for actual speech. Grunts, roars, and moans are all that you'll hear from them. Did you learn my language from listening to Ragnar and Eureka? He nods, exuding a newfound confidence, as if my questions are beginning to appear more friendly rather than incriminating in his mind. How long have you been stuck here for? He raises eight fingers. Eight? Years or moons? Gale picks up a stick and writes it in sand. Eight x twelve. So, eight years. And of course you know how to write numbers and some math, because why not? Gale scratches the side of his mouth, not used to others being impressed by his actions. His chains clank and jiggle as he moves. Scribbles, please remove his shackles. Are you sure? Will that put me back to sleep? No, it's a very simple spell. Then yes, I'm sure. A deep cut appears on the metal's surface out of the thin air and both wrists' braces fall to the ground with a thud. A gale touches and rubs his wrists, surprised. In his eyes, I probably resemble some kind of powerful wizard that's solving all his problems with my magic. I want you to be free. You've served these nightfallen enough. You deserve to. He shakes his head frantically upon hearing my words, reaching for the chains and trying to put them back on. Huh? Hey, what are you doing? Don't you want to get out of here? Don't worry, I'll help you get it far away. They won't find you. For the first time, he touches me out of his own accord. Besides, when I was unconscious, obviously. His hands grab my shoulders, and he stares into my eyes, shaking his head again, slower, more determined. I don't understand. Are you that afraid of them? Another head shake, and an exasperated sigh follows. He points to the bed. Points to the roof points to the bucket of water in the corner. Shelter, warmth, water. I understand what you're trying to say, but I still don't get it. Excuse me, I need some air. Not that this place is that uh, sealed shut. The door is a curtain. He lets go with the last sad look in his eyes. He didn't look sad while being kicked or humiliated or bossed around, but watching me walk out the door is another story. I squat right outside, leaning on the hut's walls, not having the energy to take more steps. Not like I need to run away or anything, but I do need to clear my mind. 
So? So? Finally you realize that you're not the hero of your self-crafted tale of fantasy? Did you ever taste defeat, but still have no idea how that happened? I was locked in a crystal and reduced to this form, wasn't I? A mystery to this day. So, why am I always wrong about everything every time? Your cat friend explained it perfectly. The world is not black and white. You decided to see his imprisonment as nothing more than the evilest of deeds. You flipped your opinion of these wildfires completely upon seeing them mistreat someone that your kind literally kills for energy. But what about him? Does he even know about how unfair his situation is? Savage furs are solitary creatures. In the wild, he would have had to have fend for himself, hunt, stay away from any tribes of wild furs or other savage furs as well, and demons. Not to mention the hunters that would kill him on sight. Didn't that headmaster of yours say it at the opening speech two days ago? Exterminate all savage furs on sight? Here, the scale of yours has a bed, a roof over his head, food, water. He's protected from other tribes as well as hunters. And since he isn't allowed out of the camp, he won't be forced to battle or risk his life hunting for game. Are you getting it now? Mm, yes. I think I do. But he's also being deprived of lust draining. A small price to pay for a safe life. Yeah. Hopefully my cat friend Kusani doesn't have anything against my next decision. There is just one more thing for me to do now. This is porn. His life never needed a nosy leopard in it to begin with. It's time I let it go. I know, I get attached too fast. I met a cat that I now cannot imagine life without only three days ago. I met hot wildfurs that won't leave my mind whom I met today, and a lizard that simply deserves all my kindness even if we only started to interact an hour or two ago. So for once, I am going to let it go. It's for the best. I should probably help him put the shackles back on at least, so he doesn't get in trouble. A final goodbye might be in order as well. I walk back in to find Gale lying asleep on the hay bed, his back towards me. He does like energy, so it's only natural. I better not disturb him any longer. Goodbye, and take care. I turn back around and... Whack. Huh? What just happened? What are you doing? We were supposed to drug him, not punch him unconscious. He's asleep, isn't he? That was a point. Now, what about the lizard? Asleep. Poked him with the darts. You think it's enough? I gave him enough to knock out a wyvern. He won't make trouble. I doubt that he'll remember anything when he wakes up. Good. Too bad that he didn't get to stick his dick in him. But if they didn't breed, what do we do? Uh, we'll just say that they did. Nobody will check. The ceremony says that he mustn't be a virgin. Well, the ceremony also says that it has to be consensual. So if you still think that we can make him fuck you when he wakes up, then by all means. I knew that we should have insisted more. I thought that the lizard had it covered, okay? Cody clearly has eyes for him. I just thought that it would be more lustful. Now, Ruth, take him away and make sure that my brother doesn't see you. What will happen to the ceremony if we're not... Shut up already. It has never been about this stupid ceremony. Remember my plan and don't mess it up. Of course. Your plan. Meanwhile... I am exhausted. These people act like they've never experienced magic before. I had to pretend like my teleportation spell and broom malfunctioned, and it wouldn't work properly. Seriously, one more person on my magic reserves would have been completely gone. I'm barely standing as it is. Cody will be so impressed by my fortitude. A promise is a promise, just enough to get us back. Although, I might collapse as soon as we get home, but at least we'll be home. I should go find the chief before anyone else finds me in this tree that I hid in. Which shouldn't be too hard because I'm just talking to myself out loud here. But oh man, what a relief it was that Cody actually wants to go home. I really thought that he'd stay here and get married and have gay kids with 
Wait, that's not how that works. Anyway, he wants to go home because that lizard situation pissed him off. I didn't want to feel depressed and agree to go immediately. I might have been a bit hard on him, now that I think about it, but... What was I supposed to say? Yeah, let's go right now and my new family is not worth my time and they're terrible people. I wanted to stay. I still do, but not as much as I wanted to be around Cody. It's infuriating how much I like it here and despise it at the same time. Make up your mind, Kusa- Kusani. Yet another name for Aiden to tease me about. It sucks. I suck. Ugh, everything sucks. Everything and everyone but Cody. Even Kevati, like, seriously, people. It's a damn Wervin, not a dragon deity. I know how Cody must have felt every time that I insisted. Of course I knew the truth, but I wanted it to be true, just for the fun of it. If it really were a dragon, that meant that in a matter of weeks I'd have someone to talk to. Someone who will be around me always and never leave. Huh. That just means that I'm probably never coming back. I should at least say goodbye to Ruth, and my stepdad, and my stepbrother, and Eureka. I try my best not to follow my face while getting down from the tree without magic. Mission accomplished so far, with one or two minor scratches, now to find everyone. One person that I know for sure where to find, so I'll go to him first. Huh? What do you mean, no? No entry. Why not? Chief, say no. I am his son. No son. Nobody. Entry. Chief busy, he say. Well, this is annoying. In that case, tell him that his son is going home. I wanted to say goodbye, but if he's just so busy, I guess that I'll go without a final farewell. How about that? Uh, repeat? Never you mind. Ragnar will have to be enough. I make my way to the main camp, disappointed but not discouraged. The first thing that I noticed is the missing pillar that was burning in a pyre a couple of hours ago. A deep hole left in its place and no ashes to be seen around. Good workers, fast too. They even planted new unburned grass, neat. Other than that, there isn't much around here. As far as I understand, it's still nap time, or breeding time, so no Nightfallen roaming around. I'd lie if I say that I wasn't curious what breeding with Nightfallen would be like, since obviously that will literally be my job in the future, but I promise to remain a virgin until that special someone comes along. After that, my ass will become an open mic comedy show, and that's a promise. A single pair of people catch my attention, showing up from behind a hut. Hey, Ragnar, Eureka! Hey, look who's finally free again. Did our tribe mates finally leave you alone? I had to run away from them or else they would have drained all my magic. <laughs> they both try to contain laughter. What a coincidence. We also had to run away from your friend before he could completely drain us. That's right. Oof. That man cannot be satisfied with just two of us. Hehe. <laughs> what? Uh, um, what do you mean by that? Cody insisted that we commence in a session of breeding. He's just that invested in knowing our ways better, you know? So, the three of you fucked? Is what you're telling me? A simple way of saying it, but yes. It's safe to say that he drained all the lust that I had in me, for at least the next moon. <laughs> and, um, where is he right now? Oh, he's not done yet. Far from it. You know Ruth caught his eye in that beautiful, white, spotted fur, so he's not tapping out like we did. They're still in the hut somewhere. If you hurry, maybe you can join them. He runs out of stamina fast while dancing, but give him some cock and ass, and he'll go at it forever. It's alright. I'll pass. Then, why are you looking for him? He said before that he wants to go home. I wanted to see if he'd stay another day, but... He seemed very determined to go back. I just wanted to teleport him. He seemed much more determined to drain all the lust that he can at the moment. You should probably come back for him tomorrow morning. We heard that you have some kind of important assignment, so we wouldn't want you to miss it, 
but we would also hate to deprive Cody of his needs. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll just, uh, come back later. Simple. In that case, I guess this is goodbye. For now. You're not leaving without hugging your brother, right? And your brother's partner needs one as well. The hug is tight, almost violent. These people are strong. Okay, okay, that's enough. We'll meet later anyway. With some final waves, a flash of blue light takes away my vision before the main gate of my dear town appears. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. So... Clearly something very suspicious was going on. Um... Well, let's start from the beginning. So, Cody was basically chatting up Ragnar and Eureka about, you know, the aspects of living, you know, the wild first, the masks, the naming, uh, about Ragnar, about Eureka, about Ruth, about the lizard, um, and the children. So, eventually, uh, the party ends, Cody and Kusani have a discussion, and it doesn't really end well because Cody's... This is a little something that kind of bothered me with, like, the... the the ending half of Tate's route. Uh, to me, it kind of feels like Cody sort of like flips a little, but I kind of know why though. So it kind of towards this half, we kind of see that Kusani is sort of not really telling people what he actually thinks and feels because he kind of. It, it kind of seems obvious that Kusani w didn't intend to stay. Like, yeah, he found his quote-unquote family, but like, really, it's like, okay, I'm here, and I have really no connection to you people whatsoever, so, eh, I want to go back. But I also don't want to seem very, um, like, callous and just, you know, do an Irish goodbye and just, you know, leave without saying anything. So he decides to stay, and I guess sort of put on a front that he's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm happy here, yay, I'm having fun, yay. But that also is sending the wrong message to Cody. And about Cody though, it kind of, he kind of comes off as a little inconsiderate and kind of stupid throughout his, um, throughout Tate's route, but I'm gonna get, get into that more, you know, in the next video. But, um, I kind of feel that what Tate was doing is sort of it led to whatever it is that is about to happen to Cody because he was just kidnapped. So <laughs> Tate's actions have consequences. Let's just leave it at that. Because obviously Ragnar and Eureka are lying and something is about to happen. For those that already know what's going to happen, you know, keep your trap shut. But yeah, anyways, so, you know, write down in the comments what you think is going to happen and what you feel so far about what is actually happening. And thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Lush Shard yourself, you can do so by going down into the link in the description for Mind of First Twitter page, as well as their Blue Sky page, if I have already linked that, which should have direct links to itch.io where you can download uh, the game and play it yourself, or you can just go to itch.io yourself and, you know, do that. Um, I will also be posting a link down for their Patreon, where you can subscribe and get early access to builds of Lush Shards, which will, yeah, I mean, like, the next one is about Scribbles, the, the sort, what is it, the, the summoning shard route, which will have Ethereum as, well, I, I'm not going to say your partner, because I don't think he's your partner, I think he's just a character that's going to, uh, uh, like, be of focus, I guess, maybe he's the adversary or something. I mean, he definitely seems very interested in Cody, but it, it usually comes off as like the, I'm interested in him sexually. So like, ew. stay away, horse. I already have eyes for only two of these idiots. It's very obvious who these two idiots are. It's definitely not the one in purple. Anyways, um, but yeah, so I'll be posting that down there. 
as well as my coffee in case you want to, you know, donate to me. It's not necessary, but it is appreciated. Always is appreciated. And yeah, you know, channel memberships, we have that now. You know, if you want to become a channel member, that will also be appreciated. There's two tiers. There's one that's a dollar. There's one that's three. You get the little badge by your name and you get um exclusive emojis that only you can use. And then you get, depending on which one you pick, uh, you will get like thanked in the video you know like little credits i'll 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 say your name or i'll have like little credits that scroll by automatically and if you pick the other one you'll get that plus you get early access to videos that i might have uploaded that are just not available yet to the public um so yeah by the time that you see this uh for the public i don't know if i'll have anything up yet but i'm gonna try to just have like at least one or two videos um for members a m month or like a week I, I don't know i'm not gonna promise anything because uh, you know i do have a life <laughs> uh i promise that i will try to post stuff i just don't know how much <laughs> anyways but yeah so i guess that's it for now and i will see you guys in the next video Bye bye